Good morning, Stephen Zonard here with Remax West Zonard Associates, broadcasting from Nobleton. We've uh, shut down our office officially as of Friday, or our, our office, me and Elisa, our, our section of the Kleinberg office, and uh, we're definitely going to work remote. So basically, Kleinberg right now is, is a skeleton office. We've removed all our computers, all our Macs, and we've just uh, situated one computer there if we needed it on the fly, and also it's a, a facility to house files right now. Very expensive facility to house files right now. But these are the times. What are you going to do? I mean, ultimately right now, especially in real estate, our business is based on social interaction and human contact. But ultimately, we can still do this remotely. It's not an issue. Um, so that's that's what we're doing now. Just to take precaution. We don't want to be especially, uh, you know, be in interaction all day at the office and ultimately bringing, um, you know, germs and and, uh, and, and potentially a virus home, so especially my dad's still in the hospital. So right now we've, we've totally uh, disconnected because his immune system's actually, uh, or naturally a lot uh, more delicate than, than myself and my kids. So we've separated families right now, which is great um, and for the, the best for the future. Um, so what are we doing now? How are we navigating during this period? Because as, as I'm mentioning, my business is basically, or real estate is basically based on social, social interaction and also human contact, but we can be remote. And uh, this is what we're doing it now, just basically doing everything remotely and, and being limited to appointments. Like um, last night we had an offer presentation. We didn't do it in person. Usually I'm a little old school. I'll do the listing presentation in person. We did it, you know, just on online and uh, via DocuSign and signed documents. And we did just phone conversations, a little bit of FaceTime when needed. And ultimately we got the job done. We sold over asking and uh, everybody's happy. Uh, going forward, we're, we're gonna, we took in actually four listings last week, but as of going forward, we won't uh, take any more listings and just for the safety of our clients naturally and, uh, and just for the people around because it doesn't take anything. We don't know uh, who's, who could be carrying the virus and that. Uh, so basically the only, thing, only listings that I'll be taking in, in the future if, if need be is, is urgent situations where a seller has purchased and they're closing. Let's say they, they've purchased a new, uh, new construction and they need to close um, you know, so they need to sell their property, then naturally I'll, I'll take that listing just to help out uh, clients for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, just switching gears here, in real estate, there's a saying is that you need to list to last, right? You know, you need to list properties in order to, to last. And that's what that uh, saying means basically is that when you, you have listings, you become the employer. And then when you're a buyer's agent, you are the employee of the employer, which is the listing agent. Uh, during these periods, naturally, you, you definitely want to be on the other side of that spectrum. And I'll tell you why. Uh, especially, in, in, you know, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you need to be agile. So we have to make changes. There's a paradigm shift happening. We have to be in our tools and be able to switch quickly to uh, capitalize on an opportunity. And as one door closes, another one opens. And definitely for real estate trading, we need to be a little bit like Warren Buffett during these situations. And one of his, uh, his sayings and one of my favorites is basically be fearful when people are greedy and be greedy when people are fearful. And this is during that period. And uh, with that said, during the, since January, I've been anticipating this exact thing that, that's happening now because, you know, as a world today, it, we're not separated like we used to be, let's say, 30, 40 years ago. We're so inter intertwined, connected. So one thing affects one country, you know, across the seas, it's going to affect here eventually so this is i've been in anticipation since january i've already been uh with this mindset that we're that we're in right now so what i've been doing is is basically lining my pockets with buyers and investors just for during this preparation because i figured that the first quarter of the year is going to be decent pretty okay the problem is we couldn't get listings because nobody was listing and everything was selling so quickly so we had no opportunity to work our listings in order to get more listings so it was one of those uh, you know, it was, a, it was a little bit tough. So I think as if, you know, I carried some uh, sales over into this year, plus the sales that I've done this year, we're at 13 or 14 sales for the first quarter of this year, which is pretty decent. Um, but also I'm planning for a little bit of a blank period. Maybe the second quarter, we're gonna have a little bit of a shortage of sales, but I'm also, that's this is why I'm lying buyers and investors to, so I can have a strong third and fourth quarter. And uh, so what we've been doing right now is, is basically the last three months is, is had all our clients that are investors and buyers basically set themselves up with mortgage agents, mortgage agents and get pre-qualified, make sure everything's, all our ducks are in a row ready to buy. So basically right now we're waiting for is the market right now. We'll see the market still kind of go because uh, it's just basically the, the tail end of what's happening. Because you got to remember real estate's like a cruise ship. It turns very slow. 
doesn't just turn on a dime like a like a speedboat or anything like that. So uh, when when something happens, it takes a little while to for it to uh, to turn. So basically, that's going to happen now. You'll still see sales happen, and then ultimately, you're going to see this drop off because people will be fearful to visit houses, uh, eight, uh, sellers that wouldn't want anybody in their house. So you're going to see just properties just come right off the market. Uh, so you're going to see this decline and also pricing because anybody that's going to be on the market is more forced to be on the market rather. So if they, they have some sort of urgency where they need to sell because they purchased another property. So it's going to be more of like, let's say, uh, fire sales in a sense. Um, so basically, we're ready to pounce during this period. Even also myself, I'm looking for a, a, another duplex or a triplex during uh, this year. It got too expensive. So it was, at the end, it was <clears throat> probably 100K more than it was last year, what I was looking for. So now I'm, I'm going to wait for that. Uh, period to come down so I can purchase myself. So basically what's going to happen? Demand of houses is especially the global fear happening the demand for so the demand okay forget about this so the demand for housing is there we know this because what we witnessed in uh, 2017 January to April was just a flurry of purchasing why immigration strong job opportunities strong or job growth is strong and in, in, in Toronto and Canada is an amazing place to live. So we've witnessed that in, in 2017 and then 2020, we had January to March where we had this fury of, of purchasing 15, 20, 30 offers on every property, which is pretty crazy. So the demand in real estate's there. Now being being a student of the of the mind for the last 10 years in social behavior, you're gonna see people just basically, uh, with the global fear happening, just shut down everything, ultimately faltering prices, which I've seen earlier. Uh, so basically, if you kind of look at people, actually, can you just delete that further? Let me see here. So we know the demand in housing is, so this is, so my thought process during this, we know the demand for housing is there, okay? And I'll tell you why. Because in 2017, we had a fury between January and April, which was insane. We've never seen this. We've never experienced something of, of such fury of purchasing and, and pain over asking and, and just, you know, bidding wars on everything. And we've just experienced it now. So three years later, even though we're not on stable ground as we were in 2017, we still go into a, a fury of buying. Why? We got strong immigration, job growth, and Canada's an amazing place to live. It's, it's the perfect recipe for demand in real estate. Plus, government the, gov the way government does business and doesn't, uh, doesn't let's say, uh, partner up with builders in order to build vast amount of properties. Basically, builders are just uh, pigeon, to be or pigeon, pigeon tied to basically small projects, rather, like two, three hundred, five hundred houses at a time, rather than two, three, five thousand houses at a time, like the States does, which always has a great supply for their demand. So this is what's happening here. So just basically as a student of the mind, I, I, yeah, I've been studying the mind for the last 10 years, basically, and, and social behavior. And the reality is the general public has a very short term memory. So what's going to happen now is, yeah, so global fear, you're going to see prices just falter, you're going to have this lull, so you're going to have this nice curve, and you have this lull. And what happens is during this lull period, people have short term memories, and you know, life goes back to normal, there's no more of this uh, you know, negative news in the, on the media and, um, you know, everything's, everyone's back to work, everyone's happy, everyone's spending money, everyone's vacationing and short-term memory kicks in and then you're going to see this big curve. So naturally, we want to buy on this lull period. So we're going to follow this when it hits, hits the bottom and then ultimately we're going to snap it right before it hits up. And the, the whole goal for this is because even myself, I'm an, I'm an investor uh, and I'm looking for the triplex Tri or duplex or triplex and something that I can potentially build on because I'm getting my Terry on license, which uh, is the future of Zell and Arnold Associates is to build and develop property. So uh, just in the last year, everything just became too high price where it didn't make sense where to split a lot and the profit was basically gone because the purchase price was too high. Even development charges are insane. So right now, like I said, we're gonna follow that law and then snap it and then before it hits up. And then we're gonna sit back and watch these properties just just nail between 20, 15 to 25 percent in one year just as we witnessed this year because as of 2019 we bought that property um that nice little building there in kleinberg and we, we paid 865 and, and literally went to about one one million fifty to a million one at the heights now i would imagine it's going to taper down but you know it's a two hundred thousand dollar spread literally in a couple months which is fantastic and this is what we're going to do with the next investment um so that's basically it. Uh, I would just say everyone hang in there, just chill out, 
be safe, hang out with your families, enjoy this time. It's, it's an official uh, March break where, um, you know, we get to stay home and spend time with the family. So let's enjoy this period. Obviously, let's, uh, let's be safe.